Hello everybody, it's question and answer Thursday, yay! So for those of you who don't know, welcome to The Impactful Parent. If you're new, I'm Christina, I'm the founder of The Impactful Parent, and every Thursday, you can put in questions all week long. I pick one at random and I answer it right here, live on Instagram. So here I am, nice to meet you. And for those of you who are brand new to our community, welcome, 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 I hope you're watching. Uh, Replays are always found in The Impactful Parent feed and I help parents of school-age children with free tips and advice and uh, resources for school-age children. Um, So, and a lot of that is applicable to the younger kids too, but that's kind of where I focus. So, here's our question for today. And this is going to be a tough question for me to answer. I'm going to be honest right away, but I'm going to do my best. Um, This mom writes, I'm a mom of two kids, ages six and nine. I am really concerned about sending my kids back to school in the fall. I'm hearing horror stories about how how the COVID virus is going to spread, but at the same time, I can't afford to homeschool my kids. I don't know how I'm going to do that financially and let alone maintain my sanity with more homeschooling. I hear ya. Um, What do you think I should do? Prepare to homeschool the best I can or to keep to keep my kids safe or send my kids back to school. Thanks in advance. All right. Well, thank you, this parent who's sending in their submission. And again, this is going to be really hard for me to answer because there is no right answer. But I am going to give you some tips of what I think that you should be doing around this time. And hopefully that'll help. Um, it's impossible to answer because every school is has different regulations. They're all going to be figuring things out differently on how they're going to open up and keep kids safe. Um, and every state's going to be a little bit different. But Three things I'm going to recommend. The first is consider the safety of your kids with the realities of what's going on in your own life. And I'll get to that in a second. The second thing I'm going to suggest is keep in mind how you respond outwardly in front of your kids. It's going to be super important and I'll get more into that here too. And the third thing I'm going to suggest is trying to keep flexible. And again, I'll get into that in a moment. Let's start with back at number one. So the safety of our kids going back to school in the fall is scary. I'm right there with you. For those of you who are new to the community, I am a single mom of four kids myself. I have a seven-year-old, a nine-year-old, a 16-year-old, and a soon-to-be 18-year-old. I get it. All my kids are going back to school um, also in the fall, and I'll let you know my choice is to send them back for as long as they can for right now, but there is concerns. Okay, so what should you do? Do keep up with safety concerns and regulations and how your schools are uh, dealing with everything. Make sure you feel comfortable with how the school is handling things. Um, I will say that private schools are going to be able to social distance a lot easier than a public school will be able to. Um, For those of, again, who don't know, I have experience in both the private and public school sectors. I sit on school boards for both private and public schools. And my kids, um, they also attend school in in the private school. So um, is it going to affect us? Yeah, I mean... It's super hard. Private schools have smaller numbers. Because of that, they're going to be able to social distance. They also have a much more closer relationship with families than public schools tend to have. Not to say that your public school can't have those tight relationships with your kids and your families, but private schools, they specialize in that type of thing. So yeah, it's going to be a little bit easier for a a private school to be able to follow these protocols if they have the funds in order to get some of the hand washing stations that are going to be probably very necessary. Um, I also think that um, public schools are going to have a hard time keeping things, as you found out last fall, um, very equitable. So in private school, the Uh, income is relatively the same within the school. So um, the resources that each of the families have is somewhat, and of course there's variance, but they're somewhat the same. It's not necessarily as crazy different as in public school, where in a public school setting, you're going to have some families who cannot afford computers, families who cannot afford to have uh, the luxury of staying at home and um, being with their with their children um, and doing the homeschooling option. And you find that in private school also. 
Don't get me wrong, you find it everywhere. But generally speaking, in really big generalized terms, in public school, the population is a lot more staggered. So it's just going to be more difficult for public schools to do homeschooling options. They have experience in how to do it now, though. So that's the good part is they have that experience. And hopefully by how you, however they did it last last spring, it'll give you an idea of what might be coming soon for you and your child. I will also mention that younger kids are going to have a much more difficult time following protocols than older children. Older children can understand. High school kids, they can social distance themselves unless they're they're just blatantly saying, no, I don't want to social distance from my friends. They have the ability and the cognitive abilities to be able to social distance and stay away and not handshake and things like that. Um, your kindergartner for this family here who has a six-year-old, I'm assuming going into kindergarten, possibly first grade, um, those classrooms are going to be a lot more dif- difficult for those teachers to maintain those kind of standards, wearing their masks all the time, making sure they have hand washing, making sure they're not touching their face all the time. Um, it's just harder for a younger child because, again, they just don't have the cognitive abilities. They get annoyed a lot easier. Their tolerance level is a lot lower. Um, but you just have to go with whatever is most comfortable with your family. And I'll get more into this in just a minute. Um I will also say that um, schools, it's very likely that some schools will open and then you'll have to go back to the homeschooling option. So it's it's just every family has such unique experiences, not only with their school district and their school, which is why this is such a hard question to answer, but every family has different needs. There are parents who are able to stay home. And there are other parents who just cannot stay home um, due to financial things. And that's not, I mean, what are you going to do? There is a balance between making work for your family to keep everybody afloat and not, right? I mean, I get it. So you just have to do whatever you can. And God, I'm so sorry. I don't have much better answers for some of these questions, but it's really such a variant question to ask. Um... I will hope that if schools close, that workplaces will also take into account that schools are closing and they will also allow a lot of families to work from home. So let's get on to the second question. Part of that is I had said that maybe you should uh, be cautious about responding outwardly. This is actually a lot more important. So how we respond to going back to school is really going to affect your children. So If you're scared about them going back to school, they're going to pick up on that. If you're nervous about them going back to school, they're going to pick up on that. If you're excited for them to go back to school, then they also will pick up on that. So preparing your kids on how to feel about going back to school is really on your shoulders. And it's not about what you say. It's about how you act that they're going to follow. So just be really conscious of how you're talking and acting around your kids when it comes to this particular matter because they are going to take your lead and go with it. Um, Prepare your kids right now for the different scenarios that might happen, including getting them used to wearing masks. Um, You know, you might, if you have especially a younger child, prepare them and practice. Hey, we're going to wear a mask for an hour today. We don't want to take it off. Let's see how that feels. And especially if you have younger children, this could be a really great exercise so that when they get back to school, wearing a mask is not a foreign thing all of a sudden. Now it's something that they're used to doing instead of, oh, this is so annoying. It's much better to deal with getting used to a mask right now in the home with you than it is at school when they really, really need to do it. Um, So preparing them to do that, preparing them and showing them specifically how to wash their hands, the importance of washing their hands, talking to your kids about advocating for themselves, for sanitizing their area, for washing their hands whenever they need and not giving into the peer pressures that they might find at school of other kids who just don't care about being safe. So talking to your kids, getting them mentally prepared for going back to school excited maybe that it's going to happen, but also arming them with this um, 
with being just mentally and physically prepared for what that might look like and how to keep them safe the best that they can because you won't be there to follow them around and say, put your mask back on. So getting them ready for that now. Um, what else? Um, so the last thing I had said, uh, suggestion number three was being prepared to be flexible. That goes back to the idea that we have no control as parents of really what's going to happen in the fall. And that's scary and it's frustrating. Adults especially, we're not used to not having control and we're not used to being having such an uncertain future for ourselves. So it brings up a lot of worry and anxiety in us parents. So remember that your kids are watching you. They see that. They're going to know. So be cautious of it. But also putting ourselves in a mindset where we know that, okay, my plan is I'm going to put my kids back to school, but it very well can change. And mentally preparing ourselves for that change as well, that we just got to be ready to be flexible because it's not, it's out of our hands really on what's going to happen. So talk to your boss right now about your concerns coming up in a month. By talking to them now about your concerns that might happen later, perhaps good bosses could be a lot more flexible with you, ease your mind about maybe some of the protocols that they are already anticipating for to happen, um, talking to them about how, okay, so if my kids suddenly their school shuts down, what is that going to look like? How can you help me so I can re- maintain being an employee here and working and getting a paycheck, but still at home with my family, which hopefully you might have bosses that realize that family comes first. So that's a hope. Um, so preparing yourself for that homeschool option mentally. I know that many, many parents out there do not want to be homeschooling their kids. They saw how spring went and that was tough. I get it. I was right there with you and I am a teacher and it's a tough to homeschool your kids. But mentally preparing that it might happen is going to be step one. And if we get to that point Last spring, I put out a lot of videos saying how to set up your household so that homeschooling gets easier. I'll be sure to re, um, re bring up those subjects again so that um, you have more tips and advice on how to homeschool your kids if we get to that point. Um, so just be ready to be flexible. And preparing ourselves is just as important as preparing our kids for what might happen. This is an uncertainty, guys. I know it's hard. I'm right there with you. It's so hard. And I just want you to know that you are not alone in how you feel. Um, not only do I feel that way, I know a lot of my parent friends also feel that way. Um, it's just we're in really difficult times and we're we're all just trying to do it. I also obviously have the impactful parent. I'm trying to run a business from home. And it's hard with my kids, all four of them being around all the time. And I've had to adjust. And I get it. I just, my heart goes out to everybody that we're in such difficult time. And we're here. We're, we got to just collaborate as a community. And I hope that although it's hard to answer this question, that you guys understand The feedback that I'm giving and that I'm truly, truly hope that some of the suggestions I made today about preparing yourselves, preparing your kids and trying to be flexible and knowing what the regulations are, just keeping yourself in the know um, is somewhat helpful because it's really all we can do right now. So thank you for everybody. Again, I hope that you submit your own question for next week. It's DM me or you can email me at theimpactfulparent at gmail.com. And maybe next week I'll pick your question to answer here live. Thanks, everyone. Have a great Thursday.